I'd like to yield time, uh, as much time as he may consume, to my colleague, um, Clay Higgins. Gentleman from Louisiana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, many times in the course of my life as a military police officer and a civilian police <coughs> officer, I've had occasion to say, calm down, son. I've heard your argument. I feel your passion. I understand your position. But you're about to go too far. Just calm down and step back. This is what I advise my colleagues on both sides of the aisle today. One of my, one of my brothers here, whom I love and respect, these men seated here, they're making a mistake, Mr. Speaker. One of the gentlemen said we should be held to a higher standard. I'm talking about the removal of a member of Congress and the American people to to believe that the opinions of congressmen is a higher standard than the deliberate vote of the American people? Is a report from a committee a higher standard than the two-year election cycle as established by our founding fathers and enshrined in our Constitution? Calm down. Mr. Speaker, I've spoken for seven years to this body here, standing here, and very rarely have I had a prepared statement, nor do I today, but I'm going to read a letter that I distributed to my Republican colleagues for the benefit of my Democratic colleagues that did not receive a copy of the letter. Perhaps I'm wrong for that. I, I had considered sending you all this letter, and I did not, and I apologize for that, because it's, the media has gotten it, it's out there. Although I completely respect the work of our colleagues on the Ethics Committee, I have serious concerns about the way this particular case is being handled, and I'll oppose the George Santos expulsion. In the seven years I've been a member of Congress, many members have been subject to campaign expenditure ethics investigations. And to my recollection, members have always had the opportunity to settle the matter by restitution, even if they disagreed with the Ethics Committee conclusions. Further, in many prior instances of allegations of misconduct, I recall no massive media release from the Ethics Committee. After a bit of a whispered brush fire, the matter just went away. Maybe the member left Congress, maybe the member didn't leave Congress, but they weren't publicly crucified and expelled. The very fact that we have all read the quote-unquote investigative report indicates a level of public character assassination that I have not witnessed through four terms of congressional service. It's troubling to me that a Republican-led ethics committee would present itself as so judgmental. Previous ethics committee's investigations have always been conducted quietly, reflective of our constitutional standards of innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Reports of similar allegations of campaign finance violations, like family vacations overseas and cosmetic dental procedures and sexual adventures of every sort, have not historically been released to the public. This particular Ethics Committee investigation seems to be quite public, and I'm not seeing any allowance for the member to make restitution of alleged campaign finance violations. Full media disclosure, combined with intention to move straight to expulsion, appears weaponized to me. Colleagues, you can believe what you like, but the 56-page investigative subcommittee report is most certainly not written within the parameters normally found in an unbiased, impartial investigative report. It's filled with conjecture, opinion, and pejorative language that no professional investigative report should include, no experienced cop would, would present to a DA, and no impartial DA would ever present to a court as unbiased. You may accept this report as grounds for expulsion from Congress, but I say no. It's not right. The totality of circumstance appears biased. It stinks of politics, 
and I'll oppose this action in every way. Perhaps my colleagues should step back from expulsion, look in the mirror, reflect upon the long-established historical record of congressional behavior, consider the Founders' intent, and let we the people of New York determine their representative. This report is posing as an objective presentation of fact, yet it is most certainly written with notable disregard for professional objectivity, and it's wrapped in a media incensed public disclosure that any reasonable man can see is a congressional equivalent of a public crucifixion. I'm stunned that members would cheer for this public shaming and expulsion. It's like witnessing an otherwise fair and compassionate village gather to celebrate the burning of an alleged witch. Since the Civil War, only two members of Congress have been expelled, and both have been convicted in court of federal crimes. That's the standard, and the House of Representatives should not deviate from that standard. I'm a solid no on expulsion, and I encourage every member to carefully consider what kind of precedent we're setting here. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate this opportunity to encourage my colleagues sincerely on both sides of the aisle to step back from this expulsion. I yield.